bringing up for the jam. Pull me out on a tight spot. Let me listen. Anglicans on the move right now. Laborers in the new wine vineyard. Anglicans on the move right now. Laborers in the new wine vineyard. Eating to the bone. Rallying for a cause. Anglicans on the move right now. Hey, the Anglican voice. If Jesus is your choice You better come show and rejoice If you know God coming for the girls and the boys It doesn't matter what time Jesus calls you after What matters is as long as you answer I will shake up his spine To get some of that brand new wine Anglicans on the move right now Anglicans on the move right now Eden to the call Rallying for a cause Anglicans on the move right now Good evening to all our listeners and welcome to the Anglican Voice, the program brought to you by the Incorporated Trustees of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. I am Shemiso Makshang and I will be your host for this evening. We are now in the season of Advent, which marks the beginning of a new liturgical year in the Anglican Church. So a happy New Year to all. Today is also our fifth and final installment in our youth series. And remember, the Anglican Voice in collaboration with the Diocesan Anglican Youth and Young Adult Ministry have been featuring young persons and youth initiatives all month long. The theme for the month has been changing the way we evangelize youth and young adults. And each week we focused on a different subtopic. In the first week, we had a regional conversation on a new church for millennials. In the second week, we featured the various programs within the diocese, such as the Anglican Virtual Academy, AVA, and online confirmation class at St. Mary's Anglican Church. We also included the organization, Minds of Trinidad and Tobago. In the third week, we spoke a bit about the Youth Alpha program and heard from the youth and youth allies in the Northwest region. And last week, we were in the Sister Isle of Tobago where the Youth Assemblyman, Mr. Adriel Wheeler, would have shared his testimony and experiences with us. Today, however, we have with us the youth members from the parish of St. Andrew Coover. And these young persons are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation. Now, we can all agree that praying with our youth members is very important. The Lord continues to do amazing things in their lives. And I am confident that it is as a result of prayer. I also believe that the young people can amazingly impact our world and pursue God with great zeal and passion. That is why we in the Anglican Church strive to invest more time than ever in praying with our young people. So I now hand you over to Brother Ike, who will lead us through intercessory prayers with our young persons from the parish 
of St. Andrew, Kuva. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for today. We bless your holy name for whom you are. For you said when two or three are gathered together in thy name, that you will be in their midst. Tonight we have the youth of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. We ask that you will give us your light and strength to know your will, to make it our own and to live it in our lives. Guide us by your wisdom, support us by your power, for you are God alone. Amen. We begin with a seasonal sentence for Advent found on page 60 in the Book of Common Prayer. You know the time has come. You must wake up now. Our salvation is ever nearer than it was when we first became believers. Let's turn to page 63, the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Hymn number 253, CPWI number 253. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. Let us pray for the Church of Christ. We pray for the body of Christ. Lord, I pray for the Church, which is your body in this place. Make it a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Salt and light in our community that preserves and safeguards us from evil. We pray for those who are passing through persecution. Our Lord and Heavenly God, who suffered and bled and died under shocking conditions and rose again into newness of life, we lay before you all the believers in Christ who for your sake are going through acts of hate and intolerance that ravaging the lives of so many Christians today and in so many different parts of the world. Comfort with your grace all those who are experiencing 
the hatred and intolerance of their fellow men and give them the grace and strength to face whatever evils are being perpetrated against them. We particularly lift up their children, knowing that children can be so abused and ill-treated and used as pawns to cause their parents to falter in their faith. Guard and protect all these little ones. Keep each one from any long-term psychological harm, emotional pain, or feelings of bitter revenge that can result from the atrocities that they have had to go through and witness. Protect every single life we pray, and we ask that you would prevent any attempt to abduct Christian children and expose them to forced corrective teaching or child labor camps. Lord, you were the one that said, Let the little children come to me, and forbid them not. I pray that each and every child who experiences some form of persecution against his or her feet will be kept and protected by you, and brought at last into your everlasting kingdom, where every tear and all pain will be wiped away forever. Amen. We pray for clergy, leaders, and workers within the vineyard of Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every perfect gift, send down upon our bishop, the right reverend Claude Berkeley, and other clergy, the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you, Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. O Lord, may the good news they deliver enrich the poor in spirit, heal the brokenhearted, deliver the captives, and set at liberty them that are bruised. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray for our young people. Page 83, Book of Common Prayer God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their wood, but as a chance for a new start. Give them the strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for spiritual growth. Heavenly Father, you have called us to grow in grace. Increase our understanding of Jesus Christ and cause us, the young people, to develop a close and intimidate relationship with you. I ask, O oh God, to give all youths the knowledge of truth of God and the spiritual eyes to see so the enemy would not be able to deceive us. Lord, we desire to know you more and more each day. We pray for the manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, G5. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, for we want to abide in the Lord Jesus and allow the lovely fruit of his life to be manifest within us. Father, we thank you for the young people who have come to know and develop faith in you. We pray that each one will be filled with a knowledge of your will, through the wisdom and understanding that could only come through the Holy Spirit. May each one learn to walk in the Spirit and truth, to grow in grace, be endowed with godly wisdom, depend on your all-sufficient strength, and come to our ever-increasing knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May they bring forth the precious fruit of the Spirit and develop an ever-depending love and passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. May our children and young people mature in faith, bearing spiritual fruit in every good work and be strengthened with all power according to your glorious might. Help us to remain in the fellowship with you day by day. Support them, we pray, through the dangers and difficulties of life and give them the grace and wisdom to make godly choices in the days that lie ahead. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hymn number 48, CPWI number 48, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, no. 
We now have a reflection. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in a new liturgical year which begins with the season of Advent. This season of Advent is an excellent time for all of us to reflect, to take a step back and see how our lives have been and reflect on how ready we are to welcome the Lord into our hearts, into our families, into our day-to-day -day activities. If we all walk around, let us say in the shopping malls and many other places, we would have seen that the Christmas decorations are already up in full force, the Christmas songs and the festive mood being all around us with Christmas sales literally everywhere. But before we jump into it, let us all remind ourselves what Christmas is truly all about. Christmas is not all about the festivities, or the glamour, food and drinks, having friends and families around. Yes, that is awesome. But Christmas is all about Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is a celebration that should be focused on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Savior of the world, our Lord and King. It is the celebration of his birth into this world, the moment when he revealed himself in the flesh to all. The book of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 33 told us the salvation that God will send his people Israel, a liberation and redemption for the people of Judah and the descendant of the Israelites coming from the house of David. This was the same prophecy and revelation that the Lord had given through his prophet Isaiah in chapter 9. God loves us all wholeheartedly. Just as all of us, mankind, had fallen into sin, God had never given up on us. He has always reached out to us, calling on us to return to him, sending to us prophets and messengers to reveal his message of truth and love, calling on his beloved people to turn away from our wicked and sinful ways, embracing his mercy, and compassionate love and find reconciliation through him through Jesus Christ we have seen great light the light of his hope yes and it is with this hope that we are focused on the first Sunday of Advent each of the Sundays of Advent has a specific theme to prepare us for the coming of Christ we have hope peace joy and love. Thus, we open this season of Advent with a firm reminder of the hope in our Lord and his salvation. The Gospel of Luke chapter 21 tells us about the end of times. It is a reminder for us that what we are prepared for the celebration of Christmas, which marks the moment of the Lord's first coming and appearance in this world, we are also called to prepare ourselves for the coming trials and challenges, to be ready for the second coming of Christ, whenever it will be. This Advent is a time for us to be truly joyful, knowing that the Lord has loved us so much, that he has given us hope and salvation in Christ. As we begin this journey of self-rediscovery, to rediscover our faith in God. Let us all reflect deeply on the hope that Christ has brought to us by his coming into this world. That no matter how difficult and challenging our lives may be, that the Lord will always be by our side and will always provide for us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us all make good use of this season of Advent to prepare ourselves in heart body and mind 
so that we will be ready to welcome the Lord in our hearts and make him truly the king of our entire existence. Let us all be the bearers of his hope and light, his truth and his love to our fellow brothers and sisters all around us. Let us be the witnesses of his loving kindness by showing that same love and generosity to our fellow men, especially those who are lacking in love, the poor and the needy. I pray that this our Advent journey be meaningful and fruitful, and may God be our guide and strength, our light, our hope and courage in the midst of the darkness and trials of this world. May God strengthen us that our Advent preparation and our upcoming Christmas celebrations will be truly wonderful. Amen. Let us pray for our country and community. We pray for our president, prime minister, leader of opposition. Almighty God, we bring you before our president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, our prime minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, our opposition leader, Mrs. Kamla Pasad Bisesa, and all the members of Parliament. Reveal yourself to them and bring them closer to you, each in their own unique way, so that they may hear your voice clearly and distinctively. Strengthen them, Lord. Give them wisdom and grace. Let them speak and act with honesty and integrity in all situations. Give them a desire to promote things that honor you not just their own political career or agenda. Bring strong, wise, and spiritually mature people to surround them. Give them wisdom to reject the voices of those who would urge them to seek only personal power and glory. Let them know, deep in their soul, that only with you and through you, our country will be made Cool. We pray for those who are unemployed at this time. Book of Common Prayer, page 81, number 20. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just for their labor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the sick. Page 203, Book of Common Prayer. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those to whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness. Have confidence in your loving care and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the departed, page 198, number 8, G5. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servants and those who lost their lives to COVID 
And we pray that having opened to them the gates of the larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service that with all who have faithfully served you in the past may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hymn number 360, CPWI 360. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with all sing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. of our God and King, lift up your voice and we all sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, the burning sun with golden gleam, the silver moon with soft again, oh praise him, oh praise him. Prayer of Thanksgiving, page 89, number 35. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demands our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishment which satisfy and delights us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you, in all things. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon my life, how he dance like the dance. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon my life, how he dance like the dance. 
Let us pray. May the peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us forever. Amen. Hymn number seven, CPWI number seven. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide.
the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A special thanks to the confirmation class of the St. Andrew Parish for their intercessory prayers. I would like to thank Kayla Ramnath, Kamani Beard, John Lamy, Owen Roach, and Aquila Dominique. I would also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Brother Ike and Timothy Abdul for making this show possible. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Anglican Youth and Young Adult Ministry for partnering with the Anglican Voice and making Youth Month a reality. I would also like to shout out all my youth co-hosts who joined me during this month. Father Michael Lawrence, Cyprian Ransom, Tishon Francis, and Delisa Rollux. I am truly encouraged by the work the youth and young adults are doing for the Lord. And I would like to ask that persons continue to pray for us and support our various activities in the church. So I recognize that we may have some persons tuning in who are not too familiar with the liturgical season of Advent. So, here to shed some light on the meaning of Advent, why we celebrate Advent, I would like to invite no stranger to the Anglican Voice, Mr. Mark Haynes, and he is a lay evangelist from the parish of St. Mary, Tagarigua. Welcome, Mark Haynes. Thank you, Shimizu, for that introduction. And today's reflection will be a very short one because we basically want people to have an idea of what Advent is. Before we begin, let us take a moment to reflect on the hymn number 46 in our CPWI hymnal, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
Christians coming. Advent is the first season of the church year. There are four Sundays in Advent, the first being the Sunday nearest to November 30th, and the fourth being the Sunday nearest to December 24th, the day before Christmas Day. Advent is a season of preparation. We prepare for the coming of the Messiah, promised by God and foretold by the prophets of the Old Testament. We prepare for the expected coming of baby Jesus, born of Mary in Bethlehem, Christ, the Prince who will come again to rule as Lord in the promised reign of God. We prepare to celebrate his birth. We must understand Advent through our experiences of waiting, of hope, of promise, and of love in our lives. Jesus will come again in glory and loving power to make all things new. Purple is usually the color we use in Advent. It is for preparation, penitence, and royalty. It is the custom not to use the Gloria and other glorious hymns during Advent as a sign of our preparation for Christ's coming. Many churches hold a service of nine lessons and carols as an Advent festival as well. Advent starts the church year, also called the liturgical year. The church year is arranged into two large divisions. First, the festival period, remembering the life and work of Jesus Christ. And second, the non-festival portion, giving us guidelines for the Christian life. Our annual observation of Advent offers a new occasion to welcome and make room for Jesus Christ. But this requires preparation, especially of our hearts and our lives. We are called to cast away the works of darkness, to cleanse our consciences so that the darkness of our lives could gradually be penetrated by the coming light of Jesus Christ. This was adapted from Coming Home to Bethlehem, an Advent meditation with our family, the Anglican Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, 2007. The Anglican Church, along with many other Christian churches throughout the world, has various symbolic representations that we use to guide our celebration and guide our spirituality. One of those symbols, or one of the things that we use, is a wreath and candles during Advent. This is a long-standing tradition that was originally adapted by Christians in the Middle Ages as part of their spiritual preparation for Christmas. The wreath and candles are full of symbolism, tied to the Christmas season. The wreath itself, which is made of various evergreens, signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath, which has no beginning or end, symbolizes the eternity of God, the immortality of the soul, and the everlasting life we find in Jesus Christ. Even the individual evergreens that make up the wreath have their own meanings that can be adapted to our faith. The laurel signifies victory over persecution and suffering. The pine, holly, and yew signify immortality, and the cedar signifies strength and healing. The pine cones that decorate the wreath symbolizes life and resurrection. The wreath as a whole is meant to remind us of both the immortality of our souls and God's promise of everlasting life to us through Jesus Christ. The candles also have their own special significance. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent, and one candle is lit each Sunday. Three of the candles are purple because the color violet is a liturgical color that signifies a time of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. The first candle, which is purple, symbolizes hope. It is sometimes called the prophecy candle in remembrance of the prophets, especially Isaiah, who foretold the birth of Christ. It represents the expectation felt in anticipation of the coming Messiah. The second candle, although also purple, represents faith, 
and is called the Bethlehem Carol as a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. The third candle is pink and symbolizes joy. It is called the shepherd's candle and is pink because rose is a liturgical color for joy. The third Sunday of Advent is Gordon Sunday and is meant to remind us of the joy that the world experienced at the birth of Jesus as well as the joy that the faithful have reached the midpoint of Advent. On the fourth week of Advent, we light the final purple candle to mark the final week of prayer and penance as we wait for the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This final candle, the angel's candle, symbolizes peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill to us. The white candle is placed in the middle wreath and lit on Christmas Eve. This candle is called the Christ candle and represents the life of Christ. The color white is for purity because Christ is our sinless, pure Savior. This was adapted from the Mercy Home website, mercyhome.org. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of what Advent means and so that you will understand that it is not only about the preparation for Christmas in terms of the goodies and the treats and all the gifts, but rather our spiritual preparation that is important. Shemiso, I'm turning it over back to you. Thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to explain what Advent really is, the significance of Advent. I'm sure that those who are listening and me have never had the opportunity to learn about Advent or they may have been curious as to why we as Anglicans uh, recognize Advent, you would have brought some clarity in that area. So thank you so very much for joining us. And listeners, as you go about your week, I pray that God continues to bless you and to protect you. I pray especially for all our students preparing for, our, for their end of term exams. May God continue to guide them and help them retain all that they have learned throughout the term. I also want to encourage you to be mindful of the rise in COVID cases. Please remember the three W's. Wear your mask, watch, wash your hands, and watch your distance. And if you can, please go get vaccinated. Have a blessed week, everyone. And remember, be the salt and light of the earth. Take care, everyone.